Conference play is underway. And for the first time this season, Notre Dame will host a Big Ten series in South Bend. Tonight, they welcome the 19th ranked Ohio State Buckeyes to town for a weekend series. And so we say hello and welcome you inside the Compton family. Ice Arena alongside the 14-year NHL man, Steve Conroy, Tony Simeone. So happy to have you with us for a big time series here in South Bend. Steve, both these teams come into this weekend are winless in Big Ten play. It's an impactful two games that we have on our hands here. And it's funny because we've seen good hockey from both of these squads. And keep in mind the Buckeyes and Notre Dame, each of these teams have seven freshmen in the lineup. So the good news is they're getting better each and every game. I think this could be a turning point to one of these team seasons. Let's talk Notre Dame first. As Landon Slagger goes, so go the Irish. They are four and one in games in which he scores the goal. He's top six in the country in scoring as well. And what a start to the season. Keep in mind last year after nine games, he had zero goals. As you mentioned, seven goals now. And what I love about him is his compete level. You see all these goals, he's going to the tough areas, the front of the net. And that's what head coach Jeff Jackson really likes about his game, the way he establishes his position. So, yeah, he's a heady hockey player. He competes. He can flat out fly. I love watching this kid skate. On the other side for Ohio State, they're still searching for some offensive consistency up front. But one guy they don't have to worry about is Stephen Halliday. No, and one thing you'll do notice is his size. I mean, here's a kid who's six foot four, 210 pounds, and can he shoot a puck? His head coach, Steve Rollick, says that he's a hockey nerd. He just eats, lives, and breathes hockey. He's just scratching the surface. Watch when he gets out there because he creates space for himself. When he gets the room, he can really unload it. Tonight, he'll be playing with Caden Brown and Cam Thiessing, their number one line. These two teams have a knack for close games. Over the last five seasons, they've gone to overtime five times. We'll see what the Irish and the Buckeyes have in store when we come back. Hard to believe college hockey season's more than a month old. And these are the matchups that you look at when the calendar gets released and get excited about. Notre Dame and Ohio State game one tonight. In between the pipes for the Buckeyes, Lowen Turnis transfer from UConn. Save percentage and goals allowed can probably improve as the season goes along, Steve. Yeah, not overly big. He's only listed at six feet, but he's very athletic, covers a lot of the net. On the other side, Notre Dame has their man that they can count on. Reigning Big Ten goaltender of the year, Ryan Bischel, that save percentage again above 930. He is the vision of consistency each and every game. Uh, he gives his chance, his team, a chance to win. Puck is on the ice. Away we go in game one of a two-game series. And right out of the shoot, Ross, here's Halliday with a quick shot on Bischel. Eight seconds in, they've got the puck in the paint again. A rebound try for Stephen Halliday. An excellent start for a Buckeyes team looking for some offense. Their top lines provided that right away. Yeah, and looking for a good start on Friday. Steve Rollick, their head coach, said, you know, I've left our games. The second game, the Saturday game, the way we respond, I haven't liked the way we've come out. That's a great first shift. They lost both games a weekend ago against Michigan State. 6-0 in the first game, 6-4 in the second game. So they've allowed six goals in all three of their losses this year, looking to improve that side of the ice as well. And a pretty good first 45 seconds from Ohio State to begin this one. It was a nice face-off play right off the draw at the start of the game, and I'm not too sure what the uh, coverage was, but there was a breakdown from the defenseman of the Fighting Irish. Stephen Halliday gets in behind, and uh, that's a great first save by Ryan Bischel. And here you'll see that play right off the draw, and, and he gets the puck. He's in behind the defense. Now that's just a breakdown of communication between Plazinski and Seedham. You don't want to see a guy getting a breakaway six, seven seconds into the hockey game. That's what happened, and Ryan Bischel, big stop there. Halliday's the guy that you highlighted in the open, Steve, as Drew Bavaro winds one up off the faceoff that goes wide. Halliday's averaging a point per game through his career. He's now in his sophomore season, 49 points in 49 games played. Bavaro sends it across. Here's a quick shot. Oh, we could save that time by Turnus. Was out in front, but nobody home, and it swept to center ice. Nice job by Fisher to get down on his offside. The snapshot low and hard, and Turnus just kicked it out. Fisher with that last shot for Notre Dame. Four points in his last four games. Freshman defenseman starting to find his legs in his first month of college hockey. Here's Grant Silinoff off for Hunter Strand as the Irish move into the offensive zone. Notre Dame's coming off a weekend in which they tied Penn State twice. Both games went to shootouts. The teams split the shootout, so they each came out of the weekend 
even in points. The question for both these teams is when they'll get their first conference win. And the way the Big Ten's been working, it's not going to be easy to find wins anywhere, home or road. You'll take them however you can get them. Well, if you know anything about Big Ten hockey, especially in conference play, it's always close. It, it, they're tight games, uh, never a lopsided uh, victory or defeat. Um, and as you mentioned, both of these teams have something to prove, looking for their first win in conference. Right now, Minnesota, Michigan, Michigan State, all in the top 11. Don't forget Wisconsin, who's third in the country right now. Ohio State's accustomed to finishing in the top half of this conference under 11th year head coach Steve Rollick, of course, played his hockey at Wisconsin, won a title in 1990. He's built an extremely consistent program, Steve, that went to a regional final last year. You can see him just there behind the bench giving some instructions. He's intense. Mm -hmm. And I kind of felt that in our talk with him this year, uh, this week. Uh, very nice giving us some time as he rode on the bus here to South Bend. But uh, he's a fiery competitor. And you mentioned that 1990 uh, national championship with Wisconsin. He was a big part of it. They've been in the top four of the Big Ten regular season seven of the last eight seasons. With all the parity and how good this conference is up and down, to see what they've done regularly has been impressive under Steve Rollick has also taken them to four NCAA tournaments. They got back there last year and just missed the Frozen Four by one game. Got to the Frozen Four in 2018, and the Fighting Irish were there also. They didn't play each other, but Jeff Jackson and his squad uh, made it to the Final Four in 2018. It's of course, when Notre Dame, Michigan, and Ohio State all made it, and they all lost to Minnesota Duluth, who went on to win the title. Just a few minutes gone between the Irish and the Buckeyes. Here's Danny Nelson for Notre Dame. Freshman forward is on a four-game point streak, an assist in each of his last four. Nice stand up there by Drew Bavaro, who's played so well all this year, really. But that was a, a situation where it was basically a one on three, so he takes it upon himself to stand up the uh, winger, and he did a great job just outside his own blue line. Now here's Landon Slager, the captain for Notre Dame, takes a big hit that time by Damian Carfagna, the transfer from New Hampshire, has given him a nice punch on the blue line this year. Well, it's funny, Landon Slager had a big hit about 20 seconds earlier, payback there by Carfagna. Now Stephen Halliday on his way to the offensive zone. Saucer pass gets through. A deke in front that time from Caden Brown. Wouldn't go on the pucks behind the net. Nice dish by Halliday. I think everyone thinks that he's going to be shooting the puck because he can fire it. And Caden Brown looks like he handcuffed himself. Tried to go to the backhand. And that puck just bobbled on him right at the last second. There's the pass, the dish. Now watch this puck. Oh, he picks it up on his backhand, and that was the issue. He went backhand to forehand, tried to bring it back again, and could not. Just lost the handle, and a good stick there from Bushel. Brown's someone that comes over after a couple of seasons with Wisconsin. Only had six points in 45 games, but you see him here on the top line, playing with Halliday and Cam Thiessing, another guy they're really trying to get going offensively right now. As this shot gets in on Bischel, the save is made. It's loose for a moment, and finally, he melts it down. It's something that Ryan Bischel's so good at. Rebound control, and that one got away from him just a little bit, but he's quick to cover. And the important thing there, too, is Fighting Irish kept all the red jerseys to the outside, so that was relatively easy to pick up for Ryan Bischel. Danny Nelson coming back to help out just in case. Good clean win by the face by the Irish in the faceoff circle. That's going to be one number to keep an eye on all weekend. Notre Dame comes into this weekend top 10 of the country in faceoff percentage at 54 percent, and Ohio State not doing great in the circle themselves. They're 47 percent on the year. And in talking with head coach Steve Rollick and listening to some of his media availability earlier this week, they struggled in the faceoff circle last week against Michigan State. He thought it led to quick goals against the Spartans in those two losses. He said three goals. Three goals came as a result of lost faceoffs. So always an important part of the game. Whenever we talk to Jeff Jackson, he always stresses the importance uh, of faceoffs. So there you see Steve Rollick. And again, Oh, there's Jeff Jackson. And yeah, the important face-off. Listen, it's the most basic one-on-one -on -one in all of hockey. And you can win it, especially in the offensive zone. Uh, you're going to get a good look. And that's something, I'll tell you what, with three freshmen as centermen, well, not tonight, but typically three freshmen playing center, uh, they've done a real good job in the face-off game. Yeah, Danny Nelson is not out there right now. He's over 63% right now. Saw Jeff Jackson there. He's closing in on 400 wins here in South Bend. Pretty impressive. 
what he's been able to do here at Notre Dame now in his 19th season for the Irish. There's Brennan Ali, another one of these talented freshmen for Notre Dame, sends a puck ahead for Grant Silinoff trying to work his way in. Good work that time by William Smith, freshman defenseman, to run Silinoff off the puck. Now Ryan Gordon, freshman for the Buckeyes, sends it in. This shot is handled easily off the stick of Max Montez. Then Bischel stops play. Already heard a lot of freshmen, a lot of new faces on this Buckeye team, Steve. Only 11 returners, 15 new guys on the roster. It's a challenge for a coaching staff and team to come together anytime that happens. Well, it really is, especially when you lose a guy like Mason Lowry, Nicole, Cole McCordell, another one of those guys who left and played with Vancouver actually late last year. Mason Lowry is really doing a heck of a job with the Boston Bruins as we speak. And the other guy, Lucas Dobash, their star goaltender, decided to turn pro, and he's playing with the uh, Montreal Canadiens farm team in Laval. Well, last season, Steve, we saw this series. It was the final home series for Notre Dame last year. Went to an amazing shootout in the final game on senior night. It was a nine-round shootout between Bischel and Dobesh. He was only in his sophomore year. I think they thought he was going to come back. You see the numbers last year. You mentioned the contract. You can only imagine what they'd be like with Dobesh this year. That's not a shot at Turnus, who's come over from no. UConn, but right. if Dobesh was here, this would be his net. Absolutely. And, and you take him out of the equation, you take Mason Lowry out, Paul McCordell. I mean, you know, those are three important pieces uh, from your hockey team. So, you know, right off the bat, and maybe part of the reason in the preseason Big Ten coaches poll, they were finished, uh, slated to finish last in the Big Ten. Who are you going to pick? They were also preseason 19th overall in the country in the poll, so they just got yeah. the short straw on that one. Tells you how deep the conference is, but I think you're right. Because of all the unknowns coming in, somebody had to be last, and they were the low team on the totem pole. There's Patrick Moynihan. Good feet all the way out to Drew Bavaro. His shot didn't get through, and it rolls into the corner. Good hustle there by Moynihan. Getting to that loose puck, throwing it back to the point. Tyler Carpenter, Moynihan part of that, uh, Tyler Carpenter part of the fourth line. Moynihan comes out tonight playing on the number one line with Danny Nelson, Landon Slager. Moynihan's a guy who was a sixth round pick back in 2019 of the Devils. Played four years at Providence, Steve. 123 games before he came here. Talked a lot about the freshmen that have come into this Notre Dame team this season, but a couple of older guys, that's so valuable to get all that experience in the lineup as well. You need that. I mean, you need guys to show the youngsters the ropes. And we mentioned seven freshmen in the lineup for the Fighting Irish, seven freshmen in the lineup for the Buckeyes. But uh, those are the guys, and listen, coach is obviously very important, but you know, you're with your teammates, you're with your brothers 24 7, basically. Yeah. And, and they can really help that transition from whether it was junior hockey or whatever it was to playing college hockey. And it's tough. And you know, Jeff Jackson talked about it, playing back-to-back -back games, playing Friday, Saturday games, the intensity. It's tough. You know, it's four, four days of practice and then a couple of games on the weekend. And you've got to cram in your school studies also. It, it's a busy week. Talked about face-offs coming in. Notre Dame's had the big edge so far this year. Right now, the Buckeyes. Mm -hmm. Make it seven to three in the circle for Ohio State. That's going to be something Steve Rollick has to be happy with. Just a little bit less than seven minutes into the game, considering the way they've not performed on faceoffs this year, going up against a top 10 team on the draws this year. Yeah, that was Stephen Halliday who won that one, the big body who has the puck right now. Reminds me a little bit of Joe Thornton when I see him Ooh. out there. You know, he's a, not quite as big as Jumbo Joe was, but uh, he's a big kid. and. That's something, and it was a great question you asked Jeff Jackson this week about faceoffs and big bodies. And you were referring to Danny Nelson. Stephen Halliday is a big body. And it's a huge advantage. You stick your head in there, you've got a lot of leverage on your stick. You know, he's up against the smaller a centerman out there, Cole Knubel. Knubel did a good job there winning. Off the faceoff, Boltman drives one. Good to see Jake Boltman back on the ice. Was out for a couple weeks with an injury. I got to go back to your comment about Bo or about uh, Halliday, though. Is it just because he's 6'4 and wears number 19 that you, you think he's Joe Thornton or something? Uh, he mentioned his game. <laughs> yeah, no, it probably is. You're right, the 19. I wasn't even thinking of that. <laughs> but uh, Jumbo Joe Thornton, I'll tell you what, just a, a great 
career in the NHL. Started with the Boston Bruins, of course, uh, spent a lot of time with the San Jose Sharks. Yeah, amazing career, really. Yeah, it really was. And let's watch this first. Here's Cole Knubel looking for his first collegiate point. Goes over to Boltman, whacks it high in the air. Puck was loose, and it's held in at the line. Now Justin Janicki for Notre Dame carries it into the corner, and he'll drive it all the way around back for Boltman. Should point out Cole Knubel did score the shootout winning goal. Game one in Penn State. That could help his confidence. Let's see if it does right here. He's got the puck again. Shoots. The puck is deflected. And coming out to make the stop easily is Turnus. Cole Knubel, of course, the son of Mike New Knubel. Uh, Cole was a prolific goal scorer. He played his USHL hockey with Muskegon. Born in Grand Rapids, but uh, had a wonderful career with the uh, Muskegon team. It's just a matter, and, and Jeff Jackson talked about it. As soon as he scores one, he's going to get a bushel for it. Yeah. Jeff Jackson said, too, he was kind of surprised he's the last freshman forward that's looking for their first career point. The one thing, he doesn't have a goal. It's another thing he hasn't managed to even find an assist so far this year, like you said. Highly touted recruit coming in, very skilled player. I think they're going to see him start generating offense sooner rather than later. I don't know if you remember, but the end of that first period against Mercyhurst, it was game one. He almost scored. He put it right through the crease, and he's he's getting some looks. Here's a chance from Landon Slaggart. He fires a shot that's saved by Turnus. Haven't heard much from the captain until just now. And he's off to a great start this year for Notre Dame. Landon Slagger does so many things well, but I think it's his skating ability that merely separates him from a lot of his peers, and especially that first drive. Now, some guys are fast once they get going. He goes from zero to 60 in like one second. He, he can just really pull himself away just with those first couple of strides, and you create time and space in hockey, that's when you're going to get some good looks. Slagger right now tied for sixth in the country with those seven goals as Scooter Bricky walks in and shoots a puck that deflects up out of play. And the scoring leader, Steve, it's actually interesting to note how many players, including Slagger, will be featured on Notre Dame's uh, schedule this year. Look at Brindley there at Michigan. They've, of course, got Boston College coming to town in a couple weeks. They already saw Macklin Celebrini. So if you're in town or you're following Notre Dame, you're going to see some of the best goal scorers in the country this year. And pretty impressive numbers, considering most of these kids have only played maybe nine, ten games almost averaging a goal per game. And we just saw Bricky take that shot, the defenseman. He leads this team with four goals. Great right. hockey name, though, huh? Scooter Bricky. Oh, outstanding hockey name. Defensemen have produced a lot of offense for the Buckeyes as Brennan Ali sends it for Silinoff, whose shot goes just wide of the net. And it's picked up by Hunter Strand. Out across for Pluszynski. Now Ryan Seedham's shot is blocked that time by Davis Burnside who got in the shooting lane. Ali's having a good shift here. Right right battling up. for a puck, a much bigger player. And he ends up with it. Came alive a couple weekends ago for Notre Dame. Picked up his first career goal on an empty netter against Mercyhurst. And he's found his stride as Zach Pluszynski takes a spill in his own end. But Buckeyes were in a change, so no harm done as he now finds a way out to center ice. This feed is just out of the reach that time of Matt Cassidy. After a stint with Quinnipiac, joined the Buckeyes a couple seasons ago, and it's back on the ice. Dalton Messina drops it off. Long range shot that time from William Smith. Bischel handles it easily. Puck comes all the way back out to center, and there's Bricky once again. Approaching the midway point of this opening period, been pretty even shots in favor of Notre Dame by one right now six to five as they approach the midway point of period one. Here's Halliday great feed for Cam Thiesing looking for his first goal of the season drops it off to the trailer this time it's Deckhut Sam Deckhut lost it and now the Irish can counter the other direction Carter Slagger is into the offensive zone. He tried to drop it off for Henry Nelson. It's taken away, and back comes Halliday. Halliday trying to weave his way into the offensive zone, and then it's taken back by Knubel. You know, Wahlberg made enough with the one of those long passes to Halliday, almost a 100-foot pass, basically springing Halliday in behind the defenseman. T 
Garcia Wahlberg. Sends it all the way down. This is too far. And an icing call. Bring the puck back into the Buckeye zone with about nine and a half minutes left here in the opening period. Nice look at uh, Justin Janicki. Seven goals and seven assists last year. Seventh rounder of the uh, Seattle Kraken. And of course, his brother Trevor and his dad, Curtis. Yep. Longtime Notre Dame player. Got three sets of brothers on this Notre Dame team. Buckeyes have the Dunlaps. Neither's in the lineup tonight. They need to get Joe Dunlap back, but it's going to be a while till they see him maybe end of December in January. Senior who was most improved player a couple years ago for this team. Mm -hmm. For a team that's looking for some more offensive punch up front from the forwards, they would love to get Joe Dunlap back soon. That would help immensely because aside from Halliday, they don't really have any true goal scorers, game breakers. Dunlap certainly fits that category. Cam Thiesing right there, the guy that took a spill, he's been the one to got to get going offensively because, like you said, 15 goals last year was a big-time contributor in that run to the regional final. Has not yet scored this season. It's funny, we talked to Coach Steve Rollick, though, and he said he loves his game. He's doing everything but scoring. And when you hear compliments like that, you know it's just a matter of time before it comes. Kind of the same same thing with Mike Knubel in the uh, Fighting Irish. Here's Boltman walking in. Oh, good shot that time, but Turnus saw it the whole way. Came out to the top of his crease and made the save easily. 8.35 left in a tight opening period. No score between the Irish and the Buckeyes. No score in the opening period here in South Bend. Tony Simeone with Steve Conroy. This is what Notre Dame is in the midst of, Steve. That is about as tough of a 15-game stretch as you'll ever find in your schedule. I'd say so far, they're keeping their head above water. This weekend's a big one for them because you just see what's looming. Minnesota, Boston College, Michigan, at Michigan State, there's nowhere to hide going forward. No, the only uh, unranked team, well, there's no unranked teams there, so yeah. <laughs> Absolutely tough and another good shot off a face-off win from the Irish One thing that's worked for Notre Dame though is that they're in the midst of playing eight of their first 11 at home This will cap that stretch of eight of 11 at home when the weekend is done Ohio State's on the other side of that when they're done with this weekend series They will play seven of their first 11 on the road So they're probably figuring if we can just get out of here with Obviously they'd love two wins, but a win and a draw Split the series. That's probably a success as Danny Nelson weaves his way in and his shot the flex wide. Yeah, good stick by Johnson because he might have been beaten just a little bit with that dipsy do from Nelson, but right at the last second gets his stick out in a deft little redirection. There's Nathan McBriar, freshman defenseman. And stretch it up ahead now for Ryan Gordon, another freshman forward. Stops up, drops it off for McBriar. Takes it towards the corner, now peels his way back out. At the line, Montez spins and throws it down low. That's again, three freshmen on the ice. Youth injection here in Columbus as the Buckeyes go to work with some freshmen on the ice. Strand in the corner for Notre Dame, had it taken away by Montez. Backhands towards the middle that time. It was Burnside that was lurking, goes through his skates, and now the Irish do manage to settle it in their own end and seek a way out. It's a long stretch pass. I think, yeah, it went all the way untouched, so it's going to be an icing call that brings it back into the Irish zone. One thing both coaches talked about with all this youthful enthusiasm, with all the freshmen, that they see improvement each and every game. Steve Rollick said he likes the way the, the freshmen have played, as has Jeff Jackson. So, now something I think we've noticed too, Tony, the fact that uh, the youngsters aren't shying away from the bright lights. They've taken it upon themselves to be a part of the team, to be big parts of this team and uh, have played, uh, played very well. This puck is loose off the face-off, and now Silinov had a chance to get it out, didn't, and the Irish will take their time in their own end. See how Ohio State is stacked up in the neutral ice area. It's like a 1-3-1, one, one. and there's not a lot of room for the Fighting Irish between the blue lines, and there's a perfect example. You got to chip it and chase, and instead you end up turning it over. Yeah, the puck's been iced a few times. Hasn't seemed like Notre Dame's had any easy access into the offensive end. You could feed that time by Dalton Messina. Chipped it through his legs for a streaking Sam Decca, and he takes a shove along the boards and has the puck dislodged. 
Out to the line it comes. Didn't get all the way out, though. Messina has it. Back for Cassidy, trying to pull it through his legs. Good stick by Paul Fisher of Notre Dame to intercept, but once again, the puck's not out. It's Cassidy in on Bischel, and he makes the save. The situation, you mentioned the good stick from Fisher. You figure the puck's going to be in transition going the other way, and they don't clear the blue line. Right there, it gets turned over. Maybe a bit of a bad break there for the Fighting Irish. A quick shot from Cassidy and easily smothered by Ryan Bischel. To point out, Ryan Bischel, 48 saves in his last start at Penn State. It's about 48 of 50 shots that came his way. Just four shy of his career high, which was 52 last year against Penn State. <laughs> Well, Landon Slatter got to the puck for a moment, but good work by Brent Johnson to track it down for the Buckeyes and not let him in on his own. It was Johnson a couple of times in this game already. Active stick, the transfer from North Dakota. Drafted by the Washington Capitals. Third round pick back in 21. You know, if you're getting someone from North Dakota, likely good college hockey pedigree on them as that puck deflects just wide towards the corner. And now this one does go up and out of play. I should point out too with Johnson, number seven, his dad, retired Air Force uh, personnel, which uh, is outstanding. Grew up in Dallas. He grew up there with uh, Gildan, who plays on this team. So a couple of Texas kids. And that just goes to show the influence of what the Dallas Stars have done yeah. in Texas. Uh, you see more and more kids coming out of California, out of Texas. Uh, you know, and even. Even in Ohio with Columbus Blue Jackets, you see a lot of players coming out of that city. You're seeing hockey kind of pop up everywhere, like you said. You got Davis Burnside, who's on this team from Scottsdale. Mm -hmm. As Trevor Janicki is looking for his brother, Justin, streaking into the offensive zone. It's intercepted, though. Thomas Weiss, freshman, sends it into the corner. Streaking after it's Patrick Guzzo. He was looking to center a feed that time. Janicki was able to. Settle it down, get it off to Bavaro, and the Irish are out through center ice. I like that play by Guzzo. You know, he realized you're not going to score from back there, but maybe you can bank it in off somebody, and that's what he was hoping for. Almost ended up in a scoring opportunity for the Buckeyes. Here's Michael Mastro Domenico, sophomore defenseman for the Irish, has an assist in each of his last two games as Ali sends it for Silinov. Here's Grant Silinov into the corner. He throws on the brakes and now cycles it back down low for Ali. He skates back towards the line, pivots, takes it inside the circles, off for Silinov, drops it off for Hunter Strand. Here comes Strand's shot. Good save by Turnus. It was loose for a moment, but it swept to the corner. A good shift by that forward line for the Irish, and now Seedham does well to keep the puck at center ice and not let the Buckeyes get off for a change. They get two or three good shifts, and they're really Kind of listed as the third line for the Fighting Irish right now. Strand, Ali, and Silinov doing a real good job. Pluszynski shot, ricocheted wide of the net. Ali's back on it. This is a lengthy shift now for Ohio State. Some tired legs out there as Pluszynski wants to keep the pressure on in the offensive zone. Here's Hunter Strand. Pluszynski from distance did not get through. Ricochets towards Burnside. He can get it out to center. Michael Gildon was unable to get it into the Irish end, but it's close enough to the Buckeye bench that they can now make a change. Yeah, you, you hit it right on the head. They, they were dead tired, and even though the Irish were out there too the same amount of time, when you're on offense, it's easier <laughs> to keep your energy. When you're defending, I don't know what it is, but it's just so much harder when you don't have the puck. Maddox Fleming, who's been playing very well for Notre Dame, tied for the team lead in points, sent one out to Henry Nelson. This shot goes all the way wide, comes back around, and now the Buckeyes are able to skate it free. Here comes Matt Cassidy with speed. Over to deck cut, backhanded, looking for Johnson trailing the play. The puck hopped high. Carter Slaggart was on it for a moment, and the Buckeyes retrieve it. Good stick by Carpenter. Coming back, kind of helped break up that play. This puck goes all the way into the corner. Out for deck cut. He has time and space. The shot didn't get through. Back to Johnson. He won't shoot it. Slagger intercepts for a moment. Now Carpenter spikes it off the glass, and out it comes to center. Good block by Boltman. Took one for the team high in the shoulder. Now Cassidy in on his backhand, and Bischel read it the whole way. Came out to shut down the angle and stop it. 
Ryan Bischel now, that's eight or nine saves for him, which is under his average, but something we've seen throughout this period, just the rebound control. And typically you don't want to put it into the bread basket. Cassidy was just trying to go upstairs with it, but right into the uh, crest of Bischel. Here's Bricky, holds it in at the line. Scooter Bricky walks in, shoots. Got a toe on it, did Bischel that time. But Montez, first one to get back to it. Off for Bricky, across it goes, looking for Montez again. He couldn't corral it, and Danny Nelson can clear for Notre Dame. Bricky, I think, was looking for a redirection in front. Burnside was just off to the side of the net, and I think that's who that pass was intended for. Paul Fisher in his own end, being harassed by Burnside. Almost taken away. Now the puck's loose behind the net, and there's Montez again. Some good early shifts from the freshman, Max Montez. Carfagna across for Bricky, looking for a redirection. It does get tipped towards Bischel. He's able to keep it out. Carfagna holds it in as the Buckeyes are in the midst of their best shift. Burnside in tight. Bischel able to slam the door shut and keep him out. Some extended zone time there for the Buckeyes. It started earlier, though. Bricky with a nice move at the point, and then he's trying to spot Burnside. Can't quite get to him. Good job by Bavaro to kind of spot that. Realize that Bricky was looking for somebody to deflect it. And a really good job by Bischel, too, to kick that pad out and get the puck out. 90 seconds left in the opening period. But an entertaining, disciplined hockey game. No penalties taken so far. No real dangerous odd man rushes. I actually imagine, Steve, both coaches are probably pretty happy with the structure both teams have shown. Yeah, aside from that early partial breakaway from Halliday seven seconds into the period, <laughs> That's right, yeah. you're right. That there hasn't been a lot as far as odd man rushes. Here is Halliday. Drops it off. This shot gets in on Bischel. Stops it easily. Kicks it towards the corner. And now Trevor Janicki is able to skate it into the neutral zone for Notre Dame. He's out there with his brother, Justin Janicki. Now tried to send it across for Knubel. Went through his legs. And back come the Buckeyes. Halliday for Thiesing. Big hit by Master Domenico. Stood him up with the puck. And now Notre Dame comes back. They can work on a three on two. Janicki off for Knubel. Back for Justin Janicki. And the pass was behind him. Situation where I think Cole Knubel has to shoot the puck. And it's hard as a freshman. You know, you, you want to be setting guys up, but sometimes you got to be selfish and just call your own number and take it to the hoop yourself. 25 seconds left as the Buckeyes stretch one ahead. Ooh, Thomas Weiss, if he's able to collect that puck, he had some real estate to work with. Final 10 seconds, Jake Boltman's in his own end. Irish don't seem too intent on breaking it out. Well, now Master Domenico will. Final seconds, he'll fire it all the way on Turnus. He'll just glove it towards the corner, and that'll bring an end to the first 20 minutes. Nearly identical in shots. Ohio State had the 11-10 edge at the end of 20 minutes, Steve. No score. No, but an entertaining period, even though there's no numbers up on the board. Uh, some end-to-end -end action, some really good saves from both goaltenders, and typical Big Ten hockey. During the opening intermission here in South Bend, we'll have a chance to look back at some of the highlights and stats from the first period, and you'll hear my conversation with Notre Dame associate head coach Brock Sheehan about his return to Notre Dame. Entertaining first 20 between Notre Dame and Ohio State, but no score here at the Compton Family Ice Arena. No score in South Bend between Ohio State and Notre Dame. It is officially a sellout, though, here inside the Compton Family Ice Arena. Great environment. Happy to have you with us for what's been a really, I think, entertaining first period of hockey. Tony Simeone, Steve Conrad here after 20 minutes. Maybe the score is not what the fans want to see as far as the light not being lit so far, Steve, but I think it was a really strong period, and overall, both coaches probably happy with the way it's gone as well. You know, we're talking about November, but it has kind of a playoff-type feel to it, and both of those teams have yet to win in the Big Ten, so it means a lot to both squads. Yeah, they play tight to the vest, but it was still very good, very good entertaining hockey. Let's look at the best scoring chance of the entire first period. It came right as the game started. Eight seconds in off the faceoff. Buckeyes had a great look. Yeah, Halliday wins it. And then watch the centerman. 
Halliday just kind of drifted behind his check. That's Danny Nelson. The two defensemen had spread out thinking the wingers were possible receptors. And uh, Halliday not only had that first shot, he had a wraparound attempt also. So, you know, not the way you want to start a game, but certainly a great first save by Ryan Bischel, who's been outstanding this year. Uh, aside from that, that was basically the only breakdown for the Fighting Irish, maybe aside from a couple of extended uh, shifts in their own zone. So you see the numbers here. Look how even it is as well. Each team with double figures and shots. The one edge that jumps out to me, Steve, how about Ohio State winning in the faceoff circle? We did not expect that coming in when you looked at the numbers. Yeah, well, when you talked to Steve Rollick uh, just this past week, he said, yeah, we spent a lot of time on faceoffs. Faceoffs cost them their last game against Michigan State. In fact, three goals ended up off a of faceoff win. So, yeah, they're taking that seriously and as a result, uh, winning their fair share. See what adjustments are made in the dressing room. Both teams will be back on the ice for the second period when we come back. Great crowd in South Bend tonight. They've watched a closely contested game one between Notre Dame and Ohio State as we get set for the second period. One of the numbers coming in I was focused on, Steve, was face-offs. Notre Dame has been towards the top in the NCAA. Ohio State's been at the bottom. Buckeyes had the edge. Look at that, 14 to 8, and you look at their season. I mean, Ohio State's nearly in the bottom six in the country. Notre Dame's top 10, and that guy right there, Danny Nelson, 64% on the year, just one for seven to begin the game, but he gets that one. Yeah, yeah, and, and funny, Jeff Jackson talked about the advantages Danny Nelson has being a big body, you know, using his leverage, using that big stick, and uh, oh, look at this. Oh, off the rebound, Landon Slagger had a chance, and he shot it wide. That's what happens when you move a faceoff. You've got puck possession, you get it in the other team's zone, and Maybe a bit of a funny bounce, but it came right out to Slagger. You highlighted it during the intermission. Stephen Halliday won the opening face off of the game, and he had a chance. Now he sets up Cam Thiesing, who whistles on wide. Still looking for his first goal of the season after he managed to put 15 in the back of the net last season for Ohio State. Now here comes Nelson, uncontested, fires a shot wide. Is already 50 seconds into the second period. The ice looks a little bit more open between these two teams. Yeah, it's like some good passes, some stretch passes. Watch Halliday here. Oh, so fun to watch as he skates in, gets a shot on net, and the rebound try that time was whacked off the pads by Gildon. Comes out to the line as it's shot wide. Gildon's there again to reload it out to the line for Mason Klee. Well, that's the thing with Halliday. He always draws attention, and even though he got the shot off, Gildon picked up the rebound, was wide open. Great second save there by Bischel. Gildon shoots again from a wide angle, and Bischel makes the stop, then some pushing and shoving. And that's what you expect to see between these two teams. Yeah, it wasn't overly physical in the first, but I think that might change here in the second. Stephen Halliday, you know, we talked about his size, and sometimes it doesn't look like he's moving fast because he's such a big body. You know, using that arm to fend off Fisher. And there's the follow-up attempt by Gildon. I mean, not only did the spinorama end up on net, good stop. Watch Gildon here get to the second one. And a good job there by Ryan Bischel just to make sure he stays down in the butterfly. He tries to get up there. That puck ends up in the net. It's hard to believe, Steve, that Halliday was just a fourth-round pick of Ottawa a couple years ago. You see all kinds of first, second, third-rounders come through this building throughout the year. He seems to be a guy that's more than capable than where he was drafted. He, he's, he looks like a guy to me that's going to have a lot of success whenever he makes it to the professional ranks. Well, Tony, that's a great point, but think about it. You know, these NHL teams are drafting kids when they're 18 years old. That's you know, true. a lot of kids haven't stopped growing. They're still developing, especially kids who take the college route. They seem to develop just a little bit later. And, you know, that's not a knock on them. That's just, you know, that's the facts of life sometimes. Yeah. And some guys aren't group ton growing until they're 21, 22 years of age. So I think Holiday, Halliday is one of those guys. He's uh, developed later. And Steve Rollick said it himself. He thinks they're just scratching the surface as far as what Stephen Halliday can do. Yeah, 41 points last year as a freshman. Again, they went to a regional final, almost made it to the Frozen Four. As off the faceoff, Silinoff walks in, takes the shot, Turnus makes the save, puck is loose behind the net, Silinoff was after it, then he takes a spill, but it's not out. Oh, Henry Nelson whiffed on a shot so Montez can take over and skate into the offensive end for the Buckeyes. The problem there is Turnus, Turnus thought he had the puck, <laughs> and it was wide open on the other side of the net. There's a battle along the wall, Dalton Messina 
Couple to get it for Montez. Goes down and around the net, and there's Messina waiting for it in the corner. This puck does come out to center. Klee has to retreat, send it back into the Irish end, but the puck guys tag up and they go to the bench for a change. It allows Ali to skate into the offensive end. Brennan Ali drops it off for Seedham, navigates through traffic. Seedham shot, saved, rebound, Carpenter, he scores. Notre Dame's got the lead. Well, good things happen when you go to the net. That's what Tyler Carpenter does each and every shift. But watch the job Brendan Ali does. This is a one on four. So what does he do? He buys time. He button hooks right there, gets it back to the point, and watch 28 in front. Even though he's got a guy all over him, he fights for position. He gets his stick loose. He battles a much bigger player. And a great job there by Tyler Carpenter. That's a big first goal by the fourth line. Tyler Carpenter just continues to find the back of the net. It's his third goal of the season. He's provided a real punch, as you said, Steve, kind of on one of those bottom lines usually, and he keeps showing up for Notre Dame, specifically at home. All three goals have come in this building this year. You know, he just brings energy, and he's on the body. He creates turnovers. He's good in his own zone. He's good in the face-off dot, and he's loved by his teammates, and, you know, that obviously gets the bench into it, maybe more importantly, gets the crowd into it. A good first period, but there wasn't a lot to cheer about. And now we got some excitement in this building. And Tyler Carpenter leading the way again. You know, Seedham was looking for a redirection from Carpenter to begin with, but he stuck with it. He stuck with it. And that was Messina, who he ended up out battling in front of the net, the graduate student. And he gives Notre Dame that one nothing lead. I've mentioned it before, but I'll say it again. Tyler Carpenter, pretty close with the uh, Savard family, Dennis Savard in Chicago. In fact, Dennis Savard is Tyler's godfather. Yeah. And they both play center, and uh, I'm sure Dennis had some advice for him. He's used it well so far this year. Jeff Jackson, we talked to him a few weeks back, said good, hard, smart hockey player, knows what to do and when. Mm. That certainly looked like it right there. So now let's see how Ohio State responds. Of course, they're coming off a weekend in which they lost a pair of games against Michigan State, allowed six goals in each. They're in desperate need of a win, and now a chance to respond to Notre Dame's opening tally. Here's Drew Bavaro for Notre Dame. Offensive-minded defenseman, takes it behind the net, finds Trevor Janicki, who had snuck behind Thiesing. But he can't connect cleanly. Now it's back for Fisher. His shot is blocked. Good work by Halliday that time to get in the lane. But Bavaro's right back on it. Over for Fisher. He takes it down low. Fisher moving in, and it's poke checked away at the last second. Uh, important stick from the Buckeyes there. They dodge a couple of Irish chances in their own end. And now Halliday can bring it out. Off for Thiesing, whose shot is into the gut of Bischel, and he makes the save. Yeah, that was Bricky with the stick in front of the net. Notre Dame, when they score first, pretty darn good this year, 3-0 and 2. And of course, Ohio State 1-2 and 0 when the opposition scores first. So, important goal by Tyler Carpenter. And again, Brendan Ali had a good first period on that third line, and he made that play. It was a one on four. You think the play is going to die, but he bought some time. He button hooks. He finds a defenseman. Seedem ends up with the puck. So Ryan Seedham with another assist uh, tonight. And he has been a big part of this Fighting Irish offense. It's his sixth assist. Did he, miss, he did get an assist on yeah. that. Yeah, Seedham gets an assist. So that's now a six game point streak, or bigger part of points in six of the last seven for Seedham, Steve. And he's also now tied for the team lead in points. Notre Dame's got four players now with seven points on the year. Spreading it out. Seedham has been. Uh, a real steadying influence back there. You know, we talk about all the freshmen in the lineup. You know, Ryan Seedham comes in as a graduate student. He's a big body, he's 6'3", 200 pounds, but he just settles things down back there. And I, I want to say he's maybe assisted on two or three of Landon Slaggard's goal. He and Slaggard have a lot of chemistry. Well, we talked to Jeff Jackson at the start of the season. He said he was going to bring great poise, has great instincts. I'm not sure 
he, or at least I certainly didn't think he was going to provide the offense and punch he has so far as Master Domenico shoots, it's deflected wide. He did have 58 points in 99 career games with Harvard, so that's a point every other game or so. But so far this year, I mean, you heard it, he's six of the last seven. He's been really consistent offensively on the blue line for them. Yeah, point per game. But when you talk about poise, you know, I liken it to, you know, a quarterback slowing the game down. And that's what he does. He slows it down. He sees who's open. He never seems rushed, and he always finds the open man. And, uh, you know, not many guys can do that. You get the puck, and, and you kind of want to rush it. And you maybe get a little nervous. Uh, he has a very low panic point. He just hopped over the bench and grabbed that puck, sent it across for Zach Pluzinski, who throws it in deep. And once again, there's Ali after the puck, trying to create some havoc behind the play. He does. Now Silinoff drives one, and it's saved by Turnus, and it goes behind the net. And see why Ali was a draft pick of the Detroit Red Wings, even though a seventh rounder. Now oh, Pluszynski's shot saved. Good stop by Turnus, and it's cleared out. Up ahead for Strand. Hunter Strand's shot in on Turnus again, makes the save. Rebound was lurking, but swept away. And once again, Ali quickly after the puck as he backhands it down low. He's got a motor that just doesn't quit. Yeah. You know, he's just always skating, finishing his checks. And the play seldom dies when it's on his stick. He's been out there now, it feels like, for a minute or more. And he's streaking after the puck into the offensive zone now. He's not going to win this race for icing, and he's going to have to stay on the ice for this faceoff. Well, this is an important faceoff because now you've got some fresh legs out there for the Buckeyes. You've got five guys who have been out for almost a minute for the Fighting Irish. So. They're trying to catch a quick brush, uh, breather. Right now, Notre Dame doing a much better job in this second period. 7-1 unofficially the draws. Something changed during the break, whether or not maybe a coaching adjustment. They saw something going on in the circle. Something happened, but this time, Buckeyes do win the draw, and they go to work. And again, tired legs out there for Notre Dame. That shot gets in on Bischel. He's able to save it. Ali is along the wall, gave it away. In the slot that time, it's Burnside. Gets it out for Wahlberg. Tio Wahlberg couldn't get the shot in deep, and now Silinoff's out through center ice. Gets it up for Ali. He skates in. Ali fed it for Bavaro. It was behind him, and now Ali will go off to the bench with plenty of juice as he gets back to take a seat. And Bavaro really made that play deep in his own zone. You mentioned they were tired, and they turned the puck over once a little earlier. Well, Bavaro made sure that he wanted to get the puck out over the blue line and they get it down the ice. Here's Henry Nelson, brother of Danny Nelson. Henry's a defenseman, Danny a forward as the puck comes along the wall. And it's behind the Buckeye net. Seven minutes into the second period, Notre Dame has the 1 0 lead. Tyler Carpenter with his third goal of the season is the difference. Maddox Fleming. Takes a spill up for Carter Slacker. Here's Carpenter again. He's in one on two. Fires a shot that Turnus shrugs off. Tried to go short side over the uh, shoulder of Turnus. Just got a piece of it at the last second. Patrick Guzzo puts on the speed. Here's Guzzo with his backhand. Bischel makes the first stop, and he keeps the door shut. Best opportunity for the Buckeyes in this period, and it looks like they're taking a penalty. Ooh. Big hit in the corner on what, Slager? Carter Slager. I think Gildon's going to have to sit. You never want to take penalties in the offensive zone. No, and especially after a real nice rush from Guzzo. Didn't realize that big number 71 had that kind of speed. Gildon, though, ended up finishing off Carter Slager. Referee's talking it over. Ohio State yeah. has a penalty for a minor on the ice. The gate is under further review. Oh, yeah. So they're going to review it, seeing if it was a headshot or not. I'll be honest here. I, I did not see this hit in real time. Now that's, that's fine. It looked like he went between the shoulders, like almost in the chest, right there. And then the head snaps back. And I can see why maybe one of the referees thought it was a, a high hit contact with the head but from that look from that first look it looked like it was a good hit 
Yeah, it wasn't a good right. hit. I mean, it's going to be a penalty. It's going to be a two-minute minor, but it wasn't a headshot. I think you're right. I think it was because of the way that the, you'll see here, the way that Carter Slaggard's head snaps back makes it look a little worse than it is. Yeah. But the primary contact was nowhere near the head, at least from, from my stand vantage point. And it's a quick review, so uh, here Call we go. Call on the ice stands. Minor penalty for elbowing. Yeah, Call on the ice stands. Minor penalty. Elbow, was it? Yeah. Yeah. So he got the arms up a little too high. First penalty of the game taken by either team, Steve. Almost got halfway through the contest before they take it. And now a really important power play for a Notre Dame unit that's four for their last 13. They're trending in the right direction. And this Buckeye penalty kill, let's say it's slightly below where they want to be at 78% before the game. Yeah, they allowed a couple in that series against Michigan State. And of course, the Irish. They played last Saturday, Sunday at Penn State. Saturday, they had a couple of power play goals. Sunday, they just won power play attempt, but they had five shots. So as you mentioned, yeah, trending in the right direction. Seven for 35 on the year, 20%. Now they go to work. Knubel out for Seedham, just assisted on the Carpenter goal. Sends it over to Trevor Janicki. He slides it all the way across to his brother, Justin. That came out, and that'll be a Face-off that comes out into the neutral zone. There are the numbers and how they stack up. So you can see, I mean, they're both in the middle third of the country. Both would probably like to improve in, in both of these categories as they move throughout the season. Yeah, but, but I like what Jeff Jackson had to say about his power play. He, he thinks it is getting better. He said, even when we don't score, I like the momentum we're creating. Um, and chemistry is so important for a power play. And you don't want to be changing it up just because you don't have a successful power play. For getting looks, give them another chance. Irish looking for some more chances here as Justin Janicki's shot just goes wide. Strand had it for a moment. Good work that time by Burnside to knock it free, but it comes out to Seedham. Here's Seedham across for Knubel. Moves his way in, holds, shoots, and Turnus may have just gotten a piece with the knob of his stick. Exactly. I, I like that play by Cole Knubel, though. You know, he hung, hung on to it, changed his angle of attack, and got that shot off. Knubel still looking for his first career point. Great opportunity here on the power play. Knubel, down low it goes. Strand looking back door. That puck tipped up over the bar into the corner. And again, the Irish keep the pressure on here with half a minute remaining in the first power play of the game. Justin Janicki shoots and scores. 2-0 Notre Dame. Well, that's a great shot. I don't think Turnus saw it. There was some traffic in front of him. That's an excellent shot from Justin Janicki, though. He absolutely ripped this one. Watch number eight set up. He's got it now. He throws it back to the point. He's going to get it again around the top of the circles and walk in. And yeah, there was two red jerseys right in front of Turnus. You'll see from this angle. I don't think he saw it until that puck was by his shoulder. But that's an excellent release from Janicki. You see his head up the whole way. He picked his spot. He hit it. That's his second goal of the year. Had a goal against Boston University earlier this season. Had seven goals last year. He's now got his second this year. So the Irish are now five for their last 14 on the power play. And how about this, Steve? The assist you mentioned, too, as they reloaded it. It came from Ryan Seedham. So he once again sets up the goal. He's got the primary assist on both Irish tallies here in the period, and now a 2-0 lead for Notre Dame. It's great when you can have a guy back there who settles things down, and that's exactly what Seedham does. And there's been a huge turnover on this team, and Jeff Jackson talked about, you know, it's so important to have poise back there, and that's something that Seedham has. And Seedham now is leading the team in points by himself. He's up to eight with another assist. That'd be his seventh assist of the year. and Just keeps finding a way to create offense for this team from that back end. Well, he comes from an athletic family. His dad was a golfer at Rollins College. His mom played lacrosse at Colgate. His brother played hockey at University of New Hampshire. Well, it makes a lot more sense now. Golf and lacrosse, those are some transferable hand-eye skills that could set you up for a hockey career. And I left out his sister. His sister plays field hockey at Brown. So, yeah, 
Those athletic genes run very strongly in the Seedham family. Everyone liked to hold a stick and swing in that family, too. <laughs> <laughs> Irish feeling good about themselves right now. Again, both Notre Dame and Ohio State looking at for their first wins of the season. Notre Dame tied last week. Ohio State, I mean, let's be honest here, it's been tough. They had to play Michigan and Michigan State. Those are two teams yeah. in the top 11 in the country. They're 0-3 and 1 in Big Ten play. That's why it feels like in, in this weekend series, there's a lot on the line for both teams because it's not going to get easier as you go through the Big Ten. So any chance to pick up points is one you have to grab. Well, we mentioned in the open, I think this could be a turning point for whoever wins it. It, yeah. it could be something that, like a springboard into a little bit of a a run, uh, a winning streak. Great for your confidence. As we mentioned before, neither of these teams have won in the Big Ten yet, although Notre Dame just played two Big Ten opponents so far. Notre Dame's got print, or bigger part, Ohio State's got Princeton next, then Wisconsin, who's number three in the country and undefeated in the Big Ten. Jake Boltman chips it in deep. Landon Slagger, captain for Notre Dame, is after the puck. Able to avoid a hit that time by Carfagna. Now Danny Nelson pulls it off the wall for himself. Slagger's got it. Throws it off the wall for Mastro Domenico. He centers towards Moynihan. Gets it back. And now Strand will control it. Irish playing keep away here in the offensive end. As that puck's intercepted by Caden Brown. And Irish won't let them out. Thiesing lost the puck. Halliday tries to take it back from Strand. He holds on to it, shoots. Turnus makes the save. Rebound was lurking, but nobody waiting for it for Notre Dame. Strand with a real good shift here. Doing a good job protecting the puck. Halliday tried to knock him off it. And uh, Halliday's a big body. Strand did a good job of making sure he didn't turn it over. Eight minutes, 53 seconds left in the second period, and the Irish have jumped in front. They've got a 2-0 lead thanks to Tyler Carpenter. He gave them the first one, and Justin Janicki with the second. Notre Dame and Ohio State in the midst of the second period here. Ohio State's only lost three true contests this year, Steve, and their losses you can see the results. They've given up six goals in all three mm. of their losses this year, at least three. You see the 7-1 loss against Michigan, and then last week the two losses against Michigan State, they allowed six. Now it's only two tonight, as this one's given away to Hunter Strand, and Turnus has to come out and make the save. But it's been one of those things where when it's gone bad, it's just gotten worse for them at times. And, and this is a real point in the game and the season, really. they got to find a way to dig out of this hole. Yeah, that was McBriar who just, on his backhand, threw it right up the middle. And, and that's a costly, could have been a costly turnover. But we mentioned it before. It's worth stating again. Seven freshmen in the lineup, although the seven freshmen in the lineup for the Fighting Irish also, but seven freshmen in the lineup for this Buckeye team. And uh, you're going to make mistakes. You've got a lot of young guys in the lineup. There's going to be some mistakes made. See them again. Sets up Luzinski this time. And Strand tips it just wide. And Steve Rollick and his staff have seen it all, though. They've been so consistent over his 11 years now here in Columbus. I can't imagine there's any panic here at this point in the year. Went to the NCAA tournament last year, got down to the final eight teams left standing. Been to four total tournaments. And now the puck comes through center as Silinoff had it taken away. Montez, good work by the freshman. He's looked sharp tonight into the offensive zone. Skates in one on two, takes it into the corner, takes a shove in the corner. And now the puck squirts back onto the stick of Justin Janicki for Notre Dame. Oh, good takeaway that time, though, by Ryan Gordon. Then he backhands it for Weiss. Down low for Montez. Again, all of those names freshmen going to work for the Buckeyes. Yeah, you mentioned Montez. and uh, Interesting, his dad from Venez Venezuela. And they got their first taste of hockey when he was living in Wisconsin. His dad took him to a Wisconsin game. That was a great note they had on him. Don't see that all the time. See someone from Venezuela come win the game of hockey in Wisconsin. Now his kids here playing for a guy that played at Wisconsin and Steve Rollick, who runs the show at Columbus for Ohio State. As Trevor Janicki shot to flex up high and into the second level here to stop play. Well, that's the thing with Steve Rollick. You know, it's, it's all about energy. And you talked about 
the national championship. Rollick won at Wisconsin. That was in 1990. He played there from 86 to 90. And that's a young Steve Rollick winning the national championship. You know, he had an opportunity. He wasn't on the national championship. Donnie Granato, I believe, was on the national championship team. But Tony Granato, he played with as a freshman. Uh, Mike Richter was at Wisconsin when Rollick was there. So he played with some some pretty heavy hitters in the NHL. How about this? He was a two-time captain for that Wisconsin team as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, talk about a guy that has seen it all as a player and a coach at this level. Explains a lot of the success they've had at Ohio State under his watch. Bavaro sends it for Fisher. Tried to go all the way across that time for Moynihan. He recovers. Bavaro goes to work. That shot blocked that time by Brown. Slagger's right back on it. Notre Dame's looked really sharp this period, yeah. Steve. I think five on five in particular. As Bavaro has another chance. Save made. Nelson's rebound is kicked out by Turnus. Two big stops by the Buckeye netminder. And now a penalty coming up on a hit in front of the net. Yeah, Landon Slagger went down. Oh, and the misconduct to Halliday, something they can't afford. You know, what's happening right now, the Fighting Irish defensemen are wide open. And the forwards are realizing that. They're getting it back to the point. They're reloading, getting it back to the point again. Let's listen for the call. Ohio State, number 18, or 28, two minutes for roughing. Ohio State, number 19, 10-minute misconduct for abuse of officials. Abuse of the officials, a 10-minute misconduct for Halliday. I believe it was Gildon, was it 18, with the roughing penalty. Watch the front of the net. And there you see the takedown, and that was number 28, I believe, Smith. Yeah, that's Smith, the takedown. That's the roughing call. So the Fighting Irish back to the power play. It was tough to see the Halliday misconduct, at least in that look. I didn't see it there in the replay. Did you see it live? Yeah. He, he, he skated by the official and had some oh. choice words for him. Oh. So it was uh, abuse of the official, yeah. So he, he obviously said something the official didn't like. You can't do that. You've got to be respectful. And uh, yeah, he's out for the rest of this period. That is something, as you mentioned, Steve, right away. Great catch. They cannot afford to have Halliday off the ice for 10 minutes now. And on top of that, as you mentioned, the roughing call leads to another power play. Notre Dame just scored a power play goal. You can smell some blood in the water right now. Good work by Scooter Bricky, though, to clear this one back out and force the Irish to retreat. Well, Bricky's had a good game here. Such some shots on net, some good defensive plays. Justin Janicki out front. Great effort that time by Mason Klee to clear it out. If he doesn't, Trevor Janicki's on the doorstep. Mason Klee, the son of Ken Klee. Oh, another penalty. Oh, That's boy. On Klee. <laughs> <laughs> you jinxed him, and now they're going to get the extra attacker on to go six on four. Again, college hockey, you could score and then get a chance to go on the power play still, as this will now be touched. And for a minute and seven seconds, Steve, Notre Dame's going to get to go to work five on three. Yeah, Klee with the holding call, five on three. A lot of open ice. We'll hear the call. Ohio State, number six, two minutes for holding. And that's Klee right there. Oh, it didn't seem like much. Maybe from where the referee was, it looked a little differently. So Klee with the penalty. And the Irish with a two-man advantage, as you mentioned, for a minute seven. Now this is where face-offs get even more important. It'll be Gordon for Ohio State, wins it. Can they clear it? Oh, they fan on the clearing attempt. It's a chance for Bricky to clear the puck. Couldn't do so, and now the Irish can set up five on three, uncontested here. Where will they go? Nelson takes his time, hands it for Bavaro, back for a one-timer from Nelson, rebound for Slagger. The captain gives the Irish a 3-0 lead. I feel for Logan Turnus. He made an unbelievable stop on the first shot. It got redirected just about 10 feet out, but he got his pad on it. Landon Slagger, though, 
Always in the right place, right time. That got deflected by his own man. Broke a stick, actually, of the forward. And that was Gordon. But Slaggart didn't get it the first one, got it the second one. And you see Turner's trying to get his glove on it, ended up losing that catching mitt. And Landon Slaggart, his eighth Ohio goal State, of the year. Timeout. timeout from Ohio State as well. Steve Rollock. I think understands he's got to slow things down for his team here who are still going to be on the penalty kill. That was a five on three. There's still a minute and 37 left. And you see the number right there. They've been so good when Landon Slaggard scores. He's now within one of the nation's lead in goals, Steve. This guy, he's already got more goals this year now than last year. He's playing like the third round pick they expected when they brought him on campus three years ago. Yeah, well, you know, when we talked to him, between periods, and it was probably three weeks ago. We, we asked him about last year and how it must have hurt, and he said, I learned a lot from it. It, it was embarrassing. What did he go, his first 13 games, did you say? That's right, scoring he found goal? It. it. took him 13 games to score his first goal last season. So here we are, 10 games in, he's had eight already. So, you know, sometimes it's not what happens to you, it's how you react to what happens. And, and he was embarrassed by last year. He worked hard in the off season, and it's paying dividends this year. Interesting, too, you see, no assists on the score sheet. But I think you mentioned it earlier, too, when Knubel was working in. Sometimes you need to be selfish, I think, Steve, and know what your role is. Yeah. And last year, Notre Dame didn't have any double-digit goal scorers when the season ended. They need somebody there, and I think that Landon Slagger has understood that. And listen, if they get him into double figures in goal scoring before the new year, that'll be worth whatever he's giving up in not tallying assists as the year goes along. Yeah, you want that, that one guy who, who can score. And, and you know, and that's the thing for Ohio State now. The one guy who can score for them, Stephen Halliday, you know, he's lost for the rest of this period in the first four minutes of the third period. So maybe that was part of the reason that Steve Rollick took the timeout, settled things down. Hey, guys, let's kill this penalty. We're only down by three. That's not an unsurmountable lead. Question is, can they kill this penalty? Yeah. Notre Dame's got such a pep in their step. They've got two power play goals, hunting for a third here in the final minutes of the second period. Here's Knubel, all the way across, was looking for Justin Janicki, who scored the second goal for Notre Dame. Now Knubel. Off for Janicki. Back for Knubel. Now Seedham with his head up, shoots. Turnus makes the save, and it's swept out. Good work that time by Guzzo to clear it for the Buckeyes. They'll make a change. Fresh penalty killers come on. 40 seconds left to go in the power play. Good work again by the Buckeyes at the blue line. This one's cleared by Messina. And Bishop will play it behind his own net. Here's Nelson into the offensive end. Danny Nelson out for Fleming. Sends it across. Bavaro holds off on the one-timer. Now he will wind it up. It was knuckling towards net. Deflects into the corner. Penalty has expired. Teams are at full strength now. As they're back to five on five, Bavaro across for Nelson. He'll wind up the one-timer. Good save by Turnus. He keeps it out, and back it comes through center ice. You know, when you look at the goals, you can't really blame Turnus for any of them. I was just about to say, Steve, I feel like he's played a really solid game in net for the Buckeyes. The score is not reflective of the way he's played tonight. Good feed by Montez for McBrayer. His backhanded feeder, his feed rather, back door. Nobody home. Silinov takes it away. A pass through the slot comes out for Brent Johnson. It's a little play, but a big play by Silinov. You know, coming back hard, getting a stick in the passing lane just to upset that pass. McBrayer shot again goes wide. Off for of the puck is Gordon. Now it comes back into the Irish end. Johnson tracks it down. You get the sense it's an important 235 left now for the Buckeyes to, if nothing else, get some momentum headed back into the locker room before the third period. And watch for their D to get involved. And we mentioned, you know, Bricky leads this team in goal, so he'll be jumping up on the play. You know, all these Buckeye defensemen, if they get the opportunity, keep an eye on them. Turnus gloves this one, doesn't want to take any chances with two and change remaining, so 
He'll wait for a face-off. Shots were pretty even after one. It's now all the way up to Notre Dame in front, 31 to 19 in shot attempts. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty one-sided right now, that second period. Of course, the two penalties, I guess that's three penalties, right, that they took yeah. in this period? Yeah. Yeah, the Buckeyes, that certainly doesn't help. And still, if you're just joining us, Halliday, their leading scorer, easily one of the most talented players, 10-minute misconduct, had to go off with less than 10 minutes remaining in the second period. He can join the action a few minutes into the third when they come back out. Mastro Domenico skates it through center. Across the line, he'll shoot. Good hard shot on Turnus that almost got his own rebound. Tipped up over the crossbar. And it comes back in front of Turnus where he can stop play. The Irish defenseman really getting involved. That time it was Mastro Domenico who jumped up on the play. Real nice shot. I like the fact that he followed his rebound. He wasn't a spectator after he shot it. He shot it, he kept going to the net, beats Carfagna to the puck. And almost got the second attempt. It's a guy, Steve, Michael Mastro Domenico, that's looked much improved here in his sophomore season. You see that jump sometimes, freshman to sophomore. Only played 22 games last year. He's only been out of the lineup this year when it's been due to injury. He just keeps growing in his second season on campus. Well, he's got all the tools to be an effective defenseman, great skater. He's got good size, 6 feet, 210 pounds. So he's a strong body. Played the World Junior Championships last year, too. One gold with Canada as this puck comes into the Irish zone. Seedham's there, takes a hit from Thiesing. That is really somebody the Buckeyes have got to get going offensively. 15 goals last year, and now it's chipped out the other direction. Hunter Strand's going to get there first for Notre Dame. Good work that time by Wahlberg to skate back hard, but now Ali's onto the puck for the Irish. Now a penalty. Yeah, you know, it, you battle for position in front of the net. That's what Landon Slager was doing. Unfortunately, he got his stick up on Messina, number 14. And Messina, centerman, trying to cover it, Slager. Slager Notre got the Dame, stick number up. 19, two minutes for roughing. Roughing's the call. He got a stick up into the chops of Messina, so this is an opportunity. And watch 19 in front. Slager goes to the tough area, getting held, so he gets his hands up. Messina does a good job of going down kind of easily. And why not? You've had three straight penalties called on your team. See if you can't draw one. He does. And this is a real big moment in the game for the Buckeyes. 1.15 to go here in the second. Power play has been an issue for them throughout the year. They were four for their first, th first 33, but they did get a couple of power play goals in the most recent game against Michigan State last weekend. They would love that to carry over here into this final minute of the second and portion of the first minute to begin the third as they need a jolt offensively. Into the offensive zone they go. Wahlberg across for Caden Brown. Takes the shot, didn't get through. Silinoff's there for Notre Dame to clear, and it's all the way back into the Buckeye end. It's amazing what happens when you get your stick into a shooting lane. I don't know if it was Silinoff or Bavaro, but you know, that shot coming in from the point, they just get their stick into that area that the puck is traveling, and they block it and get it down the ice. Thiesing off for Montez. Wow, good work. Trevor Janicki at the line, broke it up and cleared it as well. See Paul Pooley behind the bench. Applauding that individual effort there from Trevor Janicki. Paul Pooley coaching against his former team tonight. And there's finally just seven seconds left. Montez whips a wrister just wide on the short side. Puck goes behind the net. That's going to do it for the second period. Notre Dame scores three goals in the second, Steve, to take a very comfortable 3 0 lead into the locker room after two. Yeah, Tyler Carpenter got the ball rolling early in that second period. It got the fans into it, got the bench into it. And uh, yeah, for most of that period, really dominated the Buckeye team. In the second period, Notre Dame outshot the Buckeyes by a substantial margin during the intermission. Have a chance to see what Notre Dame fights for. And then an interview with Ryan Seenan. We'll talk to the guy right there. They're filling him in. That we're going to talk to him about the pair of assists he had in the second period. Notre Dame with three second period goals. The most recent from the captain, Landon Slaggart, his eighth of the year. 
second intermission here in South Bend. Notre Dame's got the 3-0 lead. We're now joined by Ryan Seedham. Ryan, really strong period from you guys. Three goals in total. What was working well for you guys in that second 20 minutes? Yeah, I think we just got to our game. We were hard on the puck, uh, playing with confidence, I think. We were just making simple plays, no turnovers at our blue line or their blue line, and we were just trying to play fast. Ryan, you seem to have a lot of chemistry with Landon Slaggard. You've assisted on a bunch of his goals. Uh, even though you've just played with him this year, just, just talk about that chemistry. Yeah, I think he's just such an easy player to play with. He's so smart. Uh, I always know where he's going to be because he's always in the right spot, and, and he does a great job of putting the puck in the net. Last one I got for you, Ryan, is just the key to the final 20 minutes. You guys, of course, will be on the kill to start the third period. What's the biggest key the rest of the way? I think just keep sticking to our game. Don't sit back. Stay aggressive, which we've done up to this point, and we've been playing well, so just keep doing what we're doing. All right, Ryan, thanks for the time. Good luck in the third period. Thank you very much. There is Ryan Seedham. Notre Dame's got a 3-0 lead in large part thanks to his contributions. He assisted on the first two goals. Back with more after this between Notre Dame and Ohio State. Impressive second period from Notre Dame. They hung three goals on the Buckeyes, and they lead 3-0 as we get set to start the third and final period. Tony Simeone, Steve Conroy here in South Bend. The numbers speak for themselves there, Steve. It was a really strong second period for the Irish. Couple of power play goals. They kind of took control of the game there in the middle 20. They really did, and, and it looked like they did it by using their defensemen, either joining the rusher, especially in the offensive zone. You know, they have plays down deep to get it back to the point. The point man would get a shot through, and they just reload and do it all over again. So a pretty good period there for the uh, Fighting Irish. We talked to Ryan Seedham just a few moments ago. He had a couple of assists offensively that started getting them going in the right direction. You'll see him heavily involved with these second period highlights. Yeah, always head up. Uh, I like uh, Brendan Ali, what he did earlier on this play, but he gets it to Seedham. Seedham spots Carpenter in front. Look at Brock Carpenter. He's got a body all over him. It wasn't the first, it wasn't the second. It was the third attempt, just sticking with it. That was a big goal. Got the fans into it, got the team into it. And then Justin Janicki again from Seedham. This shot had eyes through the legs of the defender, then by Turnus, and then Justin Janicki. It's an important play. They're on a power play. He draws another penalty. So that becomes a five on three. What do they do on the five on three? Well, they try to get it to Landon Slagger because he has been golden from that area. His eighth of the year. After it got deflected in on Turnus, he made the stop. He couldn't stop the second or third opportunity from Slagger. That makes it 3 nothing. There's the numbers. It was really even after the first period, if you recall. Notre Dame hung over 20 shots on the Buckeyes in the second. They also got the faceoffs closer. What's it going to take from the Buckeyes here to make a run in the final third period? Well, they need some offense. And without Stephen Halliday, I think for the first four or five minutes of this period, it's going to be tough. But uh, somebody's got to pick up the slack. And I'd like to see their defense get a little more involved offensively. We saw a little bit of that in the first period, not so much in the second. Well, it's not the only game in the Big Ten tonight. Already time, I think, to start scoreboard watching a little bit. Look at those two scores on the left. Man, it is a gauntlet. Minnesota, Michigan, big win for the Gophers on the road. And how about Michigan State and Penn State, the two teams that these teams on the ice tonight in South Bend played last week? They're already in overtime there in East Lansing. So if a scoreboard doesn't tell you any more about the Big Ten standings than that, I don't know what will. It's yeah. close, and it's very competitive when you look at it. Pretty impressive of Maine to, uh, I don't know if that game is final yet, but up 3-1 on BC, the number one ranked team in the nation. That'd be big. Notre Dame plays BC in just a couple of weeks. In fact, two weeks from today, the day after Thanksgiving. It's just a single game here in South Bend. Irish and Eagles in the Holy War. As you said, if Maine can get that one off the number one team in the country, send some shockwaves around. As the Buckeyes are in the midst of a power play. Still 25 seconds and a clean sheet of ice to work with. And it is their first power play opportunity of the night. Puck goes behind the net. Still enough. Drives it off the wall. Didn't get out. Good work by Bricky to hold it in. Now he reloads it with 10 seconds left. Could be a big keep by Bricky if it results in a... Score. Instead, it's taken away by Nelson. They open up the box, and Slagger can hop out. Here comes Danny Nelson with Slagger charging down on the opposite wing, and Turnus makes the save. Kills the play with his glove, and he had Slagger coming in hard from the other side. Situation where Nelson, he'll learn from that. You know, keep it low on the ice, maybe off that 
right pad as you look at the goaltender to have it come out to Slagger. But a good kill there by the Fighting Irish. And it started with them winning the draw right off the uh, opening faceoff, getting it down the ice. You saw Nelson there. Came in leading the team in shots on goal with 32 so far. He's got four more tonight. Also another assist for the freshman. That's now an assist in each of the last five games as Pluszynski, a bigger part of Fisher, takes a big hit along the wall from Weiss, and a penalty is going to be called. From behind, it was kind of a late reaction from the referee. It looks like boarding will be the call. Uh, arm didn't go up right away because I looked, and Weiss, yeah, he finishes the check hard. I mean, you're looking at the numbers. Watch the referees down. He, he, I think he just wanted to make sure that the player got up. And boarding is the call. Two minute minor, so you will see another power play here from the Irish. See a player's numbers, the back of his numbers, you just gotta let up. He's in a very vulnerable position. You can't make that check. He does. Great call was made. And the Irish back to the power play. It's been an all too familiar sight for the Buckeyes here over the last. Geez, less than 20 minutes of play. There wasn't a penalty called until about the midway point of the second period. So over the last 14, 15 minutes or so, Steve, five penalties called against the Buckeyes. The Irish have scored two power play goals as well. Maybe a little bit of frustration coming out from this young team. You know, they played a great first period, really liked their first period. They got into trouble, though, not covering the defense for the Irish in period number two. And it just seemed like a lot of the offense was coming from the defenseman. And I'm not talking about joining the rush. I'm talking about once they were set up in the offensive zone, you know, just a little too slack, a little too soft to the coverage in their own zone on the uh, Notre Dame defenseman. So the Irish are hunting for that third power play goal. This would really be tough to overcome if the Buckeyes see the score climb to 4-0 as Hunter Strand winds one up from distance. Didn't get through, and it's Knubel that gets to it. Now see him across for Janicki, shoots and Turnus sees it the whole way, and that stops play. Janicki scored from almost that same location in period number two, but it went through a defender's legs, and Turnus didn't see it. He saw that one the whole way. And I'd say about 95 times out of 100, if he sees it from that range, he's going to stop it, and he did. Turnus has 31 saves tonight. He has let three get behind him, but two have been on the power play. He alluded to it last period, Steve. He's looked. I think really sharp for the most part of the night. Still a minute to go as Moynihan sends it out high. Now Bavaro walks across with his head up over to Danny Nelson. Back for Bavaro. He'll patiently walk the line and send it to Maddox Fleming. Plenty of space for a one timer from Moynihan and Turnus again slides across and makes a big time save. Didn't stop it cleanly. But that was a tough save because he's moving from his left to his right. And just punched his blocker out to make the stop. Patrick Moynihan wound that one up too. Has not yet scored a goal for Notre Dame after four years at Providence. This pass tips just wide by Nelson. Slaggart's there, the Irish captain. Hands it off for Fleming. Still some time. Moynihan back for Slaggart. Couldn't connect on the shot. It's swept into the Irish end. And the final seconds will tick off as Bischel slings the pass into the neutral zone. Now Nelson has it one on five as the Irish change behind him. Brent Johnson ships it out in front of the Buckeye bench. Mastro Domenico ahead for Brennan Ali. Here comes Ali. Oh, snaps Arista in on Turnus and he handles it easily. Turnus has made a number of good stops in this hockey game, especially on that last power play. Watch him there, just punch it with his blocker. You know, maybe overslid, but watch. Had to get from his left to his right in a hurry. And he makes that stop. Not an overly big goalie. He listed at six feet, but uh, pretty acrobatic, pretty athletic. Played the last couple seasons at UConn. Had a 9-12 save percentage last year. Spent three years in the BCHL. I think he's acquitted himself pretty nicely tonight for the Buckeyes, who are just seeking some offensive output here as they're still scoreless into the third period. 
Montez is going to draw a penalty. He's done a nice job tonight. As they can now get the goaltender off as McBrayer fires one. Bischel makes the save. It's loose, and now he comes across to get an important stop and force the power play. Yeah, that's a good point. That is an important stop. I, I mean, that was a bang-bang play. Ryan Bischel so good at locating the puck after the initial stop. Montez draws the penalty. Looks like it's going against Silinoff. Notre Dame, number nine, two minutes for tripping. Tripping is the call on number nine, Silinoff. But I like this stop from Ryan Bischel. There you'll see the penalty there. Took his legs out with his own skate. And shortly thereafter, Bischel with a couple of big stops. There's the trip. And here comes the power play. Irish win it but can't clear it. Buckeyes go to work now. Here's Montez. And still no Halliday out there. The one-timer from Wahlberg is gloved by Bischel. Well, it's funny. You know, Halliday, Halliday is out of the penalty box on the bench, but he's not on the ice. And he's, he and Rolick are really talking about it right now. And Halliday obviously wants to be out there. He's not getting an opportunity, and this is a subtle message being sent by the head coach. And there he is right there to the bottom right. I think Rollick was, I think he wants to be out there like you said. Now, we have no way of knowing what was said, but he might be leaving him off the power play. Like you said, to send a message because of what happened and how he took himself off the ice. I, I think that's it. You know, nobody's bigger than the team, and you got to think about the team. You know, you start yelling and cursing at a ref, uh, you know, that that's undisciplined. And, and that's something you can certainly control. So this is a message being sent, and, and those are the messages that stick with you. Buckeyes go to work on the power play still. Puck's back in the Irish zone. Still more than a minute. As they try to get it set, Montez along the wall holds the puck for the Buckeyes. And they find that first goal. Carfagna winds up a one-timer. Bischel makes the first stop. And then it's cleared out by Landon Slagger. Good job by Slagger to jump on that loose puck. It was a 50-50 puck. It looked like the Buckeyes might be able to retrieve it, but Slagger makes sure he outmuscled his man and got it down the ice. And again, Halliday not out there. Uh-oh, turnover. Bavaro off for Nelson. Back for Bavaro. He shoots. Turn is the save. Rebound wouldn't go. And Bavaro's got it again, and he'll be content with sending it back for Fisher, who can kill time in his own zone. Great shorthanded opportunity from Drew Bavaro, who really is the quarterback on that power play, but he looked like a quarterback there on the penalty kill. Another big stop from Turnus. Tio Wahlberg came into the weekend, having produced a lot of offense, was second on the team in points. Final seconds of the power play. Bricky, the captain for the Buckeyes, has it. Off for Wahlberg, back for Bricky. Navigates his way in. Bischel makes the stop. Then Silinoff, hot out of the box, has the puck. He's got some speed into the offensive zone. Silinoff, backhanded shot on Turnus. And he makes the save. 38th shot by the Fighting Irish. Just about six minutes into this third period. Watch the shorthanded opportunity here from Bavaro. Almost gets to the rebound. Bricky there just in case to help his goalie out. But that was an excellent penalty kill by the Irish. In fact, a couple of shorthanded shots. Drew Bavaro has been so good offensively for this team, Steve. He has another assist tonight. That's now five points in the last five games. Talked a lot about how really both these teams have seen tons of offensive output from their defensemen, and Bavaro's a guy that Notre Dame has been able to really rely on throughout the season. I liked your conversation with, with Jeff Jackson. You talked about Bavaro, and he sees a lot of similarities with Nick Lieberman, of course, the quarterback of the power play last year. One's deflected wide. Michael Mastro Domenico, another defenseman for the Irish, trying to get it out. Slinoff whacks at it. McBrayer couldn't hold it in, and now it is Mastro Domenico onto the puck for the Irish before Messina skates back and takes it away. The other thing he said about Bavaro is, you know, he'd like to see him maybe pass the puck a little more on breakouts, especially on the power play. You know, the puck's going to move faster than anyone can say. He loves to lug it, and sometimes that's a tough habit to break. 
But uh, you know, everything else loves about his game, especially the way he's moving without the puck. And that's sometimes a part of the game that uh, goes unnoticed. Fleming catches a feed from Slagger, Carter Slagger, shot it well wide. Now the puck's loose behind the net. Turnus able to just lay it on the tee for William Smith, who then takes a big shot from Carpenter in the corner as he sends it down. And icing is the call that will bring it back to the other side of the rink. Tyler Carpenter pretty strong on his skates. Another good fourth line shift. And it's tough for a fourth line because, you know, especially with special teams, power plays, penalty kills, you might not get out there. So they get an opportunity and they make the most of it. Watch this hit. Uh, that's just a good old fashioned shoulder the solar plex. Knock the guy down, separate him from the puck. Good job by Tyler Carpenter. 12 20 to go. All three Irish goals scored in the second period. It was a really tightly contested, as you said, Steve, close to the vest first period. And then it was Carpenter who just you saw that moments ago make that hit. He got the first goal, and then the Irish were able to tack on a couple more. And since then, they've looked comfortable out there. They've really not allowed a lot of airspace for the Buckeyes to operate. Could have been too many men, but it's not. It's, it's funny what that first goal will do. You know, it just changes the dynamics of the game. It gives your team some confidence. It gets the fans into it. It gets the band here, the Fighting Irish band. <laughs> and that's a huge point of emphasis. Whenever you talk to the coaching staff, once they hear that band playing, uh, they know the crowd's going to follow in short order. So, yeah, that, that was a good shot in the arm there by that fourth line and Tyler Carpenter. Bavaro has it taken away. Burnside moving in, sends it for Thiessing, who backhanded it just wide. Oh, it would have been a great time for his first goal of the year. He's got the puck again with some space. Fires the shot, and Bischel has the answer for Notre Dame. And Cam Thiessing's had some looks in this game, and he's got all the tools to be a scorer. He's got good speed, great hockey sense. He's fearless out there. And a redirection on the backhand. Just missed by an inch. Here's the redirection. And maybe he was trying to corral that to get the shot off, but uh, Cam Thiessing, so he maybe took a whack to that right glove, and he's feeling it. Steve, Steve Rollick has really shuffled the lines here. This is a line of Caden Brown, Michael Gildon, and Max Montez. They were the first, second, and third line left wingers to begin the game. Still have not seen Halliday come back on the ice since he was sent off for the misconduct. And he keeps staring back to his coach, hoping his number gets called, and. Uh, yeah, this is a pretty strong message being sent to that young man. I mean, they've totally shuffled the deck here. I mean, you got three guys who, again, are all left wingers to start the game. And they're on the same line here. Yeah, this, see, the, yeah. one, the one guy sitting down on the bench. Uh, that's not Halliday. I take that back. He's this right behind guys. Bricky there. Yeah. 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 He's, he's not enjoying this. And he realizes that, you know, he made a mistake. His team needs him. And he hurt his team back in the second period. So he's not going to get an opportunity. That's the thing about this Ohio State team. They don't have a lot of scoring options. And Stephen Halliday normally sees the best defenders, the best defensive forwards whenever he's on the ice. Keep an eye and see if he does get back out here at some point in the third, but so far it hasn't appeared like they've tried to send him out for a shift as Johnson fires one from distance. Bischel is able to see it, and he deflects it up out of play. So not only is this a message to Stephen Halliday, it's a message to the rest of the team, and there yeah. he is just shaking his head. He's dejected, um, but it's accountability, and that's you know something I appreciate with coaches. It doesn't matter if it's your worst player or your best player. If you make a mistake and... And there's the frustration from Halliday. You make a mistake out there, um, you're going to get sad. And you know it's 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 not only Stephen Halliday who's feeling this right now, but there's seven other freshmen on that team who realizes, hey, listen, if the best player can get sad for for making a mistake, I could get sad too. So um, I'm I'm fine with this decision from Steve Rollick. It's a pretty good look for Matt Cassidy off the faceoff. Just went wide. Nick Brayer's out there right now. Defenseman. He's also got Bricky. 
who's got the puck right now, the captain. Behind his own net. Wow, backhanded it for himself, but gave it away. There's a feed from Ali. And on the doorstep, it's Grant Silinoff with the fourth goal. The well, Scooter Brickies had a pretty strong game, but you don't want to see this kind of a play. There's nothing to be gained by trying to beat a guy behind your own net, going behind your back. Now that's what he does. Ends up turning the puck over. A good forecheck there by the Fighting Irish, too, to force that turnover. But, you know, Bricky, just get your head up, bang it off the boards, just get it out. You don't want to give him a freebie. That was a freebie. And then the Fighting Irish lead 4 0. Silinoff's on the scoreboard for the first time this year. That's his first goal of the season. And it goes from bad to worse for the Buckeyes tonight. As Funnings got the puck again for Notre Dame. One on three, fires one in, into the chest of Turnus. He'll discard the puck, and that'll stop play. Notre Dame's extended their lead. They're in control at the midway point of the third period. 4 nothing, thanks to Grant Silinoff's first of the season. Notre Dame's got a big lead tonight, Steve. They look sharp, and now the scoring depth starting to show up. The third line you see right there, Strand, Ali, and Silinoff have been great tonight. They really have. They've been doing some good stuff uh, in the first period, in the second period, whether it was creating turnovers, being sound offensively in their own zone. And the fourth line gets that first goal, and now the third line contributing as well. Uh, that's showing a lot of depth in this Fighting Irish team. You get all four lines contributing like they have. Uh, that's pretty impressive. You just saw the Silinoff goal. It was assisted by both Strand and Ali. So Silinoff's got the one goal, and then Strand and Ali each have two assists. So five points from the third line tonight. Mm. As there's a backhand on Bischel this time by Klee, he comes out to smother the puck, and that stops play. Carver Schlager getting into it with Weiss. And Weiss, both freshmen. There you see those guys on the bench. And it's also, you've pointed it out a few times, Steve, Ali right there, number 13 in the middle. He just seems to have an unrelenting motor. He does not stop out there. There was a shift tonight. He was out there, it seemed like, for at least between a minute and 90 seconds. And he had as much juice in the tank yeah. at the Ohio end of the State shift as he did at the beginning. Two minutes for roughing. Notre Dame, number 25, two minutes for roughing. Playing four on four for two minutes. A couple of coincidental yep. roughing penalties. Carter Slager. I'm not too sure who the Buckeye is, but yeah, getting back to Ali, I remember the play because it was an icing, and he almost won the foot race for the icing at the end of a long, long shift. So, Carter Slager, part of that fourth line. You mentioned the fourth line with Carpenter, Fleming, and Slager. Maddox Fleming scored his first goal at Penn State last week. And there you see the penalties. I think that's Deckhut who got it for Ohio State, Carter Slaggard in the box for the Irish. So now, four on four, and it's taken away. Here comes Cole Knubel on his way in. He shoots, and it's over the bar. Cam Thiesing did well to disrupt them in those final strides. See him, though. Right back for Pluszynski, looking for Knubel. Can't get the shot off, then he fires one wide as he goes down to the ice. That would have been a memorable first goal for Cole Knubel. He was horizontal when he shot that puck just a little bit wide. And you're right, Cam Thiesing really stopped a great scoring opportunity from Knubel earlier. In front, Bischel makes the save on Patrick Guzzo, who fired it off his pads. You get a sense like Notre Dame's looking for 22 and white right now to collect his first career point. He's got the puck as he skates back into the neutral zone, and now he will go off as Bavaro comes in. He takes a spill, and it's going to be a four-on-three power play after a trip. Yeah, Cam Thiesing with a little bit of a hack there. Bavar with a nice move to the inside. He gets dragged down. Cole Knubel, though, a couple of good looks here Ohio on the State four on four. 15, two minutes for slashing. Slashing's the call on Thiesing. Knubel, though, had an opportunity. 
and there you see things seem to come back just to upset him, and as a result, Canu will put it over the crossbar. And a little later on, I like this move to the inside by Bavaro. The trip, the hack, the slash, he goes down. Thiessing thought that maybe Bavaro dressed it up a little bit, but regardless, he's in the box. Penalty minutes tonight. Notre Dame has six. They've taken three two-minute minors. Ohio State's taken seven penalties for 22 minutes of penalty time. I bring that up because, of course, Halliday is kind of the kicker. He's off the ice for 10 minutes. Hasn't been back on as there's a one-timer as it comes back to Bavaro. Four on three as Moynihan holds the puck. Back for Bavaro. He's got space. Fires a wrister that Turnus is able to block her into the corner. Moynihan's after it. Still plenty of time here. 30 seconds in the four on three as Dalton Messina intercepts and he backhands it away. And following a very spirited conversation in the penalty box between Cam Thiesing and Carter Slaggart, and uh, a lot of pointing back and forth. See if anything happens when those two gentlemen get back on the ice. Keep an eye on them. See how it also possibly could bleed over into game two tomorrow. Mm -hmm as Nelson sends it for Bavaro. Back for Nelson, big one-timer deflected that time. Smith got in the way, blocked the shot, and now back comes Klee. He's gonna speed his way into the offensive zone. Here's Klee in oh. tight, oh, big collision. Hits the post, collided with Bischel as well. Everybody looks okay, but of course, play must stop as the net was dislodged. Well, Klee is a big body, 6'2", 195 pounds. A graduate student who played four years at RPI. Showing some good speed there. Mentioned his dad, Ken, longtime NHLer. Watch the big defenseman get a bit of a stride on the defender, Bavaro. You see the net come off its moorings. Good thing Ryan Bischel wasn't. He did get bumped, but not a lot. You mentioned Ken Klee played nearly a thousand career games in NHL. 934 to be exact. Washington, Toronto, then a host of teams in the back half of his career. His son played a couple of years RPI before he's joined the Buckeyes. As the Irish go to work again. See him hit the post. Rebound Janicki, and he drove it over the bar as well. Now Justin Janicki winds another one up, deflected wide, gets to his own rebound behind the net, and lays it off for Strand. Ten seconds left in the five on four. Seedham over for Justin Janicki. Backdoor. Oh, Strand just missed the net. Turnus dove back. I don't know if he got a piece of that with his glove or not. Maybe we'll get a look, but that was a, a partially open net for Strand. Seedham. Hustles back to it as the skating's return to five on five. Well, it's been an impressive performance from Notre Dame tonight. As Janicki takes one to the leg, he has to hop off. McBrayer trying to find Messina, who's out of his reach. Ali takes it away. Now he's got his head up. Long stretch feed for Carpenter. Scored the opening goal tonight. Notre Dame has not looked back since as Turnus will stop play as he sits on top of it. We saw Ryan Seedham with a couple of assists in this game. Almost scores a goal as he fires from range off the post. Oh, yeah. Oh. And then Strand a little later on gets set up perfectly. And let's see where he puts it. Oh, yeah. Oh, kind of a tough angle, and you see Turnes leading with his glove, but he didn't stop it. He shot it a little bit wide. It was a tough angle for Strand to connect on. Turnus tonight has 41 saves. He's been, I mean, this is about as, I think, good as you can look in a four goal allowed effort. He's certainly not been the culprit tonight. Yeah, that's what get, gets lost in this. I mean, he hasn't had a lot of help on the goals that he's allowed. And uh, he's looked very good making some big stops at some key times. I mentioned it earlier, Steve, the margin in the wins and losses. Look at those numbers. 
And right now, if this does finish up as a 4-0 defeat, you know, those losses and wins, goals for and against for the Buckeyes, it's another, I mean, on that graphic right there is about a four-goal differential in the losses as this one tips in and ends the drought. So with four and a half minutes left, Mason Clee fires a shot, and the Buckeyes are on the board. And I believe that's Brown who ended up tipping that puck right at the last second. Caden Brown mentioned, uh, I don't know if I mentioned earlier, son of Jeff Brown, longtime NHLer. And yeah, the shot from Klee, well placed, head up the whole way, just snaps it, hoping for a redirection. Looks like it goes off the shin pad of Caden Brown. the legs of Ryan Bischel spoils the shutout. In fact, the last time Ryan Bischel played in this building had a shutout against Mercyhurst, so that gets spoiled with about four and a half minutes to go in the game. First goal for Brown as a member of the Buckeyes as Bischel has to make another save against Brown right off the faceoff just 13 seconds later. He played at Wisconsin last year. He did. Huh? Yeah. Yep. Played a couple of years at the Badgers. Had just two goals and four assists in 45 games. Comes over here to play in Columbus. And tonight's just his second game in the active roster with the Buckeyes. He's gotten back on the ice and he's got a goal. And, and Steve, I'd say this, this, if nothing else, that can give Ohio State something to at least build towards going into game two tomorrow. Yeah, it's something. It, it's, it's one of the bright spots. Obviously, the player, the goaltender, has been really good, but yeah. Caden Brown, and we mentioned Jeff Brown. Jeff Brown was a defenseman in the NHL. Caden Brown plays wing. So a couple of former NHL defenseman's sons <laughs> hooking up on that goal. Yeah. Brown from Klee. Let's see if that can get them some kind of momentum here. I mean, the Buckeyes could light the lamp again, then they could probably pull the goaltender. Who knows? Bischel, haven't talked a ton about him. As you said, the shutout is dead. But he has 32 saves on the night, so he's stopped 32 of 33 to this point. As Bricky shoots, they're looking for a deflection again. That's what it's taken tonight to get past him, and this time he stops it. Well, Jeff Jackson's mentioned it a number of times. And Jeff Jackson, head coach of the Fighting Irish, a goaltender himself back in the day. Uh, he says that if Ryan Bischel sees it, he's going to stop it. And that's something that Ohio State hasn't been able to do really until that last goal. Come on off Caden Brown's shin pad, and there's Jeff Jackson. He's got to be happy with this. Oh, yeah. This performance, because you know, I, I think a lot of times when they play at the Compton Family Ice Arena, the first game, they just seem to let their foot off the gas a little bit, and then they, they respond the next game. Uh, this is a great first Friday night game for the Irish. Well, tomorrow we'll get an interesting look at them. They do technically have back-to-back -back wins this year. They won in overtime against Mercyhurst and then won the next night to complete the sweep. They haven't yet strung regulation wins together this year. Last year, they really had trouble stringing the wins together as Trevor Janicki sends one wide. I think tomorrow's first 10 minutes, Steve, will be fascinating from both of these teams. How do the Irish play? with a likely win in their back pocket. And then what do we see from the Buckeyes from the first faceoff? Because they're, you figure they're going to come with everything tomorrow. Yeah, and, and how does Stephen Halliday respond? Yeah. I mean, he's been stapled to the bench since serving that 10-minute misconduct. Uh, a big part of this team. And you know, let's see if, uh, if he learns a lesson. 240 left. Keep an eye on Turnus to see if Steve Rollick does take him out if they get it into the Irish zone, trailing by three. Maybe a toss up at this point. Puck comes out to center. Seedham connects with Ali. One thing that's, that's been impressive in this game for the Irish is the one on one battles. They've been winning their fair share of one on one battles, especially in the offensive zone. And this third line, I think, has is, is led to charge in that respect. You know, getting to loose pucks, 50-50 pucks, you know, winning the physical battle. And this is another strong shift by this third line. Strand, Ali, Silinoff have been great tonight. Got five points combined as Weiss for the Buckeyes carries into the offensive end as they change. Ali then looking to connect with Strand. 
It's out of his reach, and Ohio State will circle back into their own zone. Michael Gildon, captain. Beg your pardon. Backhands it in deep, and now Fisher. Has it caught through center. Johnson, who almost took a spill on a hit from Tyler Carpenter. Final minute 15 of this one. As McBrayer takes it away behind the net. McBrayer turns and fires, doesn't get through, and now Bavaro has it for Notre Dame. Gonna get a penalty here in the final minute, Steve. Yeah, Carter Slagger, who is drawing the ire of a few of the uh, Buckeyes. Finishes the check on Johnson and earns a two-minute minor for it. Just a minute to go in this hockey game. Carter Slager, not the biggest player out there, but certainly not afraid to throw around his weight. The previous play is under review. Well, under review, so they're well, possibly checking for a headshot. I think it was Johnson who Slager, Carter Slager finished the head on. Yeah, it is. Oh. oh. Yeah, I, you know what? You, you, obviously, you can't do that. I don't like the fact his stick came up, but it was the second shove that I was concerned about. In a dangerous spot, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so well, let's hope it's nothing more than a minor. Well, that's what you don't want to see in the final minute of a game in a three goal game. The, the biggest key right now, Steve, is you want everyone to get out of here healthy, get ready for tomorrow. And, you know, the officials are trained to be sensitive to all these vulnerable hits. But especially in a moment like this, you, you got to you got to stay away from that, right? Yeah, I don't want to call it garbage time, but, you know, a minute to go in the game. Sure. You're, right, you're up three nothing. No need to. You, know, you get away with the first one, not the second one. Let's hear the call. After review, there's a two minute minor for cross checking on number 25 in Notre Dame. Yeah, so two minute cross checking penalty. Um, yeah, you don't want to put yourself in that situation. And especially, you know, if you get ejected from the game, possible suspension. That wasn't the case. But uh, yeah, something the freshman will learn from that. Play hard, but, you know, one hit, turn around, get back into the, uh, get back in your own zone. Yeah, one more chance for the Buckeyes to get some momentum here. Five on four. Power play, which. Came alive in the loss last week against the Spartans after starting the year four for 33. Here's Bricky. Sends it for a tip by Montez. That did not miss by much. I like that play, the high tip. Montez did redirect it just by the right post. Thiesing gets towards net, shoves it, and then Bischel is collided with. This is what you worry about, yeah. Cam Thiesing took that puck hard to the net. Then he went after a couple of different defensemen. Got into it with Boltman, and they went right after Master Domenico. So you have to wonder whether or not Master Domenico had done anything to Cam Thiesing. Ohio State number 15, two minutes for nothing. There you see Boltman taking care of Thiesing. And then he comes back and kind of horse collars. Master Domenico, who really didn't see it coming because he was kind of getting into it with Caden Brown. Yeah, it, it looked like he was swinging towards him and then wrapped him up. And again, this is this is also why the hit from Slacker, why you try to stay away from it, I think, Steve, because then it lends itself. I mean, you, you've played more than me, but then it lends itself to the next time there's a whistle. Hey, we're gonna go get back and get a shot on you guys. Just seems like there's a cascading effect sometimes when you have these hits late in games that teams take exception to. They want to return the favor. Right, right. But you know, when you're Ohio State, I can kind of see it a little more. You're, you're the sure. glass is hockey game. Yeah. You're trying to build for tomorrow. You know, try and send a little bit of a message. Um, and, and listen, something might have happened between Master Domenico and Thiesing earlier. I didn't really see it, but. Uh, Four and four hockey. Final seconds. Buckeyes are going to drop to 0 4 and 1 in Big Ten play. It's going to put a real emphasis on tomorrow's game. 
You not want to leave South Bend winless in the Big Ten. For the Irish, after a couple of ties last week, they've now got their first Big Ten win of the season. The Irish take game one against the Buckeyes. Real strong performance, especially in that second period. Hey, listen, it was an even game after 20 minutes. But the Irish stepped it up in period number two and really took control and ultimately won this hockey game. Final 40 minutes lead heavily in favor of the Irish. See how these teams both respond tomorrow night. That does it for us, for my broadcast partner, Steve Conroy, producer, Derek Coleman, director, Nathan Bush, and the rest of the outstanding crew in South Bend. Tony Simeone saying so long. We'll see you tomorrow night.